going to show you a different way, a different example using. Now the letters, don't be confused when you see N. This is not something, the letters is not to be learned. You could use any letter to represent genes, but understanding what the capital represent and understanding what the common represent is very important in determining what they represent. Okay, so let's look at another example. All right, so here we have here color. This is the characteristic. These are the, the symbols for the alleles. So capital B represents black here. Common B represents brown here. Now there are three different ways we can represent these symbols. Now remember two alleles form one gene. So we could have two capital Bs. We could have a capital B and a common B, and we could have two common Bs. Now let us understand what they represent. So say you have two capital B, this person is going to have black hair. And that is because they have the same allele, meaning they have the same font. So two big B, so that same allele. And both of them in the, is in the dominant form. Why I said dominant is because it's capital letters. It stands out. So homo means same. Dominant means capital. So this person has their alleles or their gene is represented by a homozygous dominant form. Right? Two alleles are in the homozygous dominant form. Let us look at the second one. You could also have a capital and a common, which is basically meaning they have two different alleles in this case, right? They have capital and common. So in this case, because it's different alleles, we call it heterozygous. Heterozygous dominant. Dominant meaning this capital B overpowers or overshadows this small b. So it will only, the, the capital B, will be expressed, the common B, which is recessive, is dormant. It remains silent in this case. All right, so that is why the person will still have black hair, even though they have a brown allele. All right, and that's unique. When someone has two different alleles, that's a unique case. Now, the last one is when you have two common letters. So th these two represent brown because common B is recessive, and that is brown is, is a, a hair color that it's not, it's not prominent when you compare it to black hair, especially in the, the Caribbean. You find more people with black hair as opposed to brown. So that is why the dominant allele is black, recessive allele is brown. So if we have two small Bs, because it's the same allele, we refer to it as homozygous. Homozygous is same. And because it's the common form, common letters, it's the recessive form of the alleles. So it represents the color brown. All right. And these, this is what you call, these are symbols used to represent alleles. And these symbols, when you have two, two letters or two alleles, it represents a gene, and this gene, what is what is being displayed here is for here color. All right, so what is important, like I said, is understanding these terms. Once you know what these terms mean, once you see the symbols, you will know exactly what it represents. So let's look at um an example of a question where you have to use letters and you have to work it out. So, okay, so any questions with the hair color and skin color? No, miss. All right, so let's look at an actual example of a question, um, a genetic question. Now, to work out a genetic question, there are two ways. You could use something called a Punnett square, which you see in here. It's like a kind of tic-tac-toe box. 
or you could use something called a a test cross something looks looking like this now don't worry we will we will get at this point right i just want to introduce you to the two diagrams so we have punnett square which is like a box and then we have test cross so i will talk about the punnett square first now let's first look at the question right i just want to um Perhaps I can open a whiteboard just to work it out live. That always helps. All right, so I'll have the questions in, in the corner here. Right, ignore the working. I will, I will work it out live for you so you're not um, confused. Now we are looking at this example called albinism. Albinism is a, a, it's a genetic disease. It's not, it's very rare, but you tend to see people in the Caribbean as well that has um, this albinism disease. Have you all ever seen an alb albino in person? Yes, miss. What are some of their physical characteristics? How are they different? Like the much skinless, lighter, they have blue eyes, lighter hair, like white brown hair. Yeah, they have. So basically, they have no pigment. So in normal circumstances, there's a gene that controls the production of the pigment melanin. Melanin is that brown pigment. Some people have a lot of melanin. Some people have small amounts of melanin. All right. And so let's say that the trait or the characteristics, the characteristic we are looking at. All right. Let me um have some stuff on this board. Please. All right, so let's start with the trait that we are. We use the word trait. Trait means like something about your physical attribute. We we can say the word characteristic as well. So I, I'll just put trait. The trait that we are looking at in this question is skin color. All right, don't mind the handwriting here. All right, all right, skin color. Now there are two alleles that we can use to represent skin color. Now, don't worry, you, you could choose letters or they can give you letters depending on the question. The key is understanding what the letters represent. So you always have a key to show what the, what the letters represent. When you are choosing letters, don't choose a letter because I'm I saw some of your handwriting, right? I, I for instance, Ryan, sometimes when you write capital and comma, I can't tell. Choose a letter that you can, you know, distinct the capital and the comma, right? Some people, because of their handwriting, they get these questions wrong. So I'm going to use capital B. Actually, I'll I'll use a different letter i'll use well in the example i have a i'll use um i could use i could use c capital c represents normal all right sometimes some people may write out normal skin pigment but i'm just going to simplify it as normal now come and see will represent alba albino that means there's no skin pigment so normal means has has melanin albino means no pigment right maybe i could write um all right so in brackets here i'll put normal pigmentation so you know what it means and then I'll have one here 
in brackets. Albino means no pigmentation. Remember what pigmentation has to do with color. All right, so you know what it means. So we start an offline like that. Now there are three ways you can represent these um, the, this gene. So this is just the, the symbol for the allele. Now let us have three ways we can represent the gene. So I would like someone to call out some, um, you could say big C, you could say, so you could say big C, you could say small C. Tell me three ways we can represent this gene. Oh, you all got quiet. I'm asking you, what are the three ways we can represent this gene in terms of the symbols? So call out this, this, the letters and tell me three ways we can arrange these symbols. This capital C, capital C. All right. Capital C, capital C. There's one. Capital C, common C. Mm -hmm. And common C, common C. All right, so now we have to know what it represents. So using the language and the terms that we learned, two big C's, what are the terms you learned? Somebody Homo else. Thank you. Right, homozygous and somebody else, fill in the blanks. When it's in the capital form, what do we refer? Capital means that it stands out. So what is the term you learned? Dominant. So it's homozygous, dominant. Alyssa, what about big C, small C? How do you describe it? Not hearing from her. Ryan, what is big C, small C? What, is, what are the terms to describe it? This will be then hear you. Keenan, not hearing from Alyssa nor Ryan. Heterozygous dominant. Very good. Heterozygous dominant. Dominant because although you have the small c, because you have the dominant one, it will always overpower the recessive one. And then small c, small c, anybody? Um, miss, I could do that one. Sure. Homozygous recessive. Right, because it's too small C, so it's homozygous. 
and recessive because it's the the type that is not often shown in a population. Recessive is like the not it, it's not common. Right? You tend to see the dominant form more. Um, it's more prevalent in a population than the recessive form. So now that we understand these symbols, now we have to know how to work out a, a cross. So let's say you had a two heterozygous dominant parents. Let's say you had, okay, so the, the mother had big C, big C, small C, and the father had big C, small c. We use a, what you call a Punnett square to show the inheritance or the combination of the alleles that can be transferred from the parent to the offspring. All right, let me make it a little neater. So it's just like you're drawing tic-tac-toe, right? All right, so basically, you put the parents on the top. It doesn't matter whose mother, whose father in this case. And you put, you put one parent on top and you put the next parent at the side. Now you're multiplying top by side. So you, basically you're multiplying big C here by small C. Um, sorry, big C by big C. You get two big C's in this way. And then you repeat it. So you have big C multiplied by small c. So you get the outcome big C, small c. All right. Then you, you know, you do it to the next side. So you have small c and big C. Now never represent our leaves with the small letter coming in front of the big one. Right? We read this as big C, small c. So even though you have small c on top and you're multiplied, don't put small c in front. It will still be read as this big one and then the small one. Okay, some people have seen some errors like that already. Right, and what is the last one? What, what will go in the last box? Shivan, what will go in this last box here? Fine, you all got quiet now. Okay, somebody else? If you know the answer, tell me what will come here. Come and see, come and see, miss. All right, come and see, come and see. All right, so you multiply in top by side. And that is how you get your result. So in your boxes, you have one, two, three, four. You always have four here to fill out. So you always multiply top by side, top by side, top by side, and both, both sides. So here we are seeing four chances one chance you have big c so i'm going to list out the the outcome you call it the outcome i'm seeing once big c big c then i'm seeing two big c small c here and here and then i'm seeing one okay i don't know how I, why that right I'm seeing one small c, small c. So this could be read as a ratio. So if you have two parents, um, both in the heterozygous dominant form, they have one out of four chances the offspring could inherit two big c's. Two out of the four chances the offspring or the daughter, their child can inherit a big C and a small C, and one chance again out of the four where they can be an albino. You're seeing this? 
Small c and small c represents the albino. Meaning they have no pigment. So even though the parents have pigment, there is a one out of four chances that they can still have a child who is an albino. You all seeing that? Miss, could you do another one? I'm still a little confused. Sure. All right, so I'll use this example here. Okay, so here they use the letter E to represent the allele. All right, let me go full screen. So capital A means normal, common A means albino. Normal meaning they have melanin, albino meaning they have no melanin. So say we were to cross, now in this example, we have two normal, two normal parents, meaning both of them have melanin. Now they have the, G, the genotype as in the heterozygous dominant form. So they have big A, small A, and this person is meeting with big A, small A. All right. Now, phenotype means the physical characteristic. So we just simplify it as normal pigment crossing with normal. Genotype is where we use the actual alleles, the symbols to represent the phenotype. So you put in the parent on top and at the side. Now, when you're when you're crossing, you're multiplying top by side. So this will be big A multiplied by big A. You get two big, two big A. This will mean big A multiplied by small A. You get big A, small A. Then you have big A by small A. You get big A, small A. And then last but not least, small A multiplied by small A. You get two small A's. Now, when you look at this, this, these boxes, it represents one, two, three, four outcomes. So if, if these two parents were to mate, these are four different outcomes that their child, four different options, so, well, I should say, four different options that a child could have. All right? So they could have either big A, big E. That is one out of the four chances it appeared in this form. So we call it one out of four, or if you're looking at a percentage, one out of four represents 25%. That, that, that's maths, right? Don't worry with the maths. What I want you to know is if someone was, if a child was to inherit these, this symbol, big E and big E, it means that they will have normal pigmentation. If they were to, if the child was to inherit big A, small A, they still have their pigmentation, they're still normal. But if the child was to inherit this form, and there's a small percentage that they can inherit it, which is also 25% chance, because out of one, two, three, four, it is one out of four chances the offspring would have gotten this combination. And that means this it's 25% chance that it can the child can be an albino, which means that the child has no pigment. All right, but there's 50% chance or two out of the four chances the person can or can be what you call a carrier. Now they're normal in the sense that they still have the skin pigment, but they're still carrying the recessive allele. All right. So how we would be working? We first have our symbols, what it represents. We lay out the parent, the parent information. Now every question will tell you what to cross. They will give you the phenotype. You have to put the appropriate symbols. 
you have to draw your Punnett square and cross it. And then you list out the outcome. So you call this your first generation, your first generation of children from these two parents. So the genotype, you just list it as you see. The phenotype, you match the symbols to what they represent. So big A, big A is normal. Big A, small A is carrier. We have an X carrier. And last but not least, we have the albi albino. And then sometimes they may ask you to represent it using a percentage or a fraction. And because it's four chances, one out of four, if you were to convert it into a percentage and multiply by 100. So one out of four by 100 will give you 25. Two out of four multiplied by 100 will give you 50. One out of four again will give you 25%. Is it clearer now? Yes, miss. Thank you. Now we will do more practice with this. I will actually pause at this line because I want you to go through your terms. I want you to look at these examples. Don't go too far into this slide. Don't don't cross nine. Slide nine. Take down the terms. If you could draw this diagram, it will help you. To understand the terms, um, take down this first example. And next week, we are going to work on more questions pertaining to this. This, this is what you call a Punnett square. All right, so once you understand how to construct your Punnett square and cross the parents to get the outcome of the offspring, you will understand how to read this information clearly. OK, so I'm going to stop at this point in time. Um, the only homework is to take down the terms, take down the table I send with my tosis and meiosis, and be ready for next week because we want to look at more um, genetics questions. All right, Shivan, it would be nice if you could um, work on your mic, your, your headphones, so that we can hear you clearly. Sometimes it sometimes I don't look at the chat, right? It will it will be faster for you to get an answer as well. OK, so if no further questions, you all can leave and I will see you all next week. Um, Saturday, please go on. Enjoy your vacation. Thank you too,